So for the recording studio project we did today, we're utilizing these two Behringer PowerPlay Pro 8s. Uh, they're headphone amplifiers that have the ability to power and drive eight headphones each rack. So in this case, we have 16, uh, the ability to drive 16 different headphones here. Um, each unit has two inputs, uh, two sets of stereo inputs. So you have input A, which can receive a left-right, and input B, which can receive a left-right. In our case, we connected outputs on our stage rack, A and B, to inputs 1 and 2, or left and right, on input section A on the top rack. Therefore, if we turn our input level up on input A, and we make sure that our headphone channel, um, 1 of 8 for instance, is selected to receive signal from input A, then we have individual volume control of the signal that's being sent via line level cable into the back of this unit uh, from our recording studio control room. If we had more musicians on stage and we needed multiple mixes, we could send a second mix down outputs on our stage rack C and D for instance, connect those to input B um, on the back of our the same uh, headphone amplifier and then switch the headphone amplifier's channel to receive from um, B instead of A. And that would give us the ability to drive this headphone off of uh, input A, which would be a single mix for this musician, and channel 2 on this headphone amplifier um, to a totally different musician using a totally different mix using input B. And we could continue with that same process utilizing the second headphone amplifier down here and creating two more discrete and totally differentiated headphone mixes in stereo um, to create a third and a fourth for additional musicians as well. So the monitor returns aux one, two, three, four, five, and six on the console. The line outputs of those aux masters feed the returns on the stage rack. So a corresponds to aux 1, B, 2, C, 3, and so on, 1 to 1, 1 to A, 2 to B, etc., etc. We are going to use A is left and B is right in this case, and we're going to send um, these to a headphone amplifier um, input left and input right so that our musicians on stage can hear in the headphones and we can adjust the mixes using the auxes on the console. So we used XLR to get from the stage rack to the headphone amplifier rack. Um, it's male XLR on that end and it's quarter inch input on this side so we need to take our male XLR and use a female XLR to quarter inch TRS cable to get into the headphone amplifier main input. This is the left side or right side doesn't matter and then we run a second for the right as well so there's two one for left and one for right feeding the headphone amplifier. We have our aux end section, so it's a green knobs. Mm -hmm. And the way that this is set up right now is to feed headphone amplifiers down on stage so musicians can hear themselves in one mix or another. They're accompanied with uh, buttons that determine whether or not the aux end is pre or post fader. Mm. So for instance, if it's for a headphone mix or for the musicians to monitor themselves on, mm -hmm. I always use pre fader. 
mm -hmm. because I don't want to have to be tied to the exact mix that they like and not mm -hmm. be able to adjust my own faders. So if I set their level uh, pre-fader, then I can mix as I'm listening to the music all day long so that I and can it create won't affect what and it they won't hear. affect what they hear at all. So because we're listening to the digital and he's monitoring off the console, the console has, um, you know, it's all analog, right? So it's instantaneous for him. He doesn't have to wait for it to go through, through Pro Tools and then back out. That's what's advantageous about using the, the console for monitoring. You don't have to worry about the A to D and D to A conversion mm -hmm. of the buffer rate. You mean this, Uncle Remus? Never once.